Greetings, netizens of YouTube. It has come to my attention that multiculturalism has come under increasing attack in recent times. With the climate of fear associated with the refugee crisis in Europe, supposed Mexican rapists running amok in the US, and the outrages caused by terrorists, some of whom are citizens of the country that they are choose to attack, perhaps the scepticism is understandable. But in many cases the criticism of multiculturalism on social media and elsewhere is born through ignorance, both of what multiculturalism means and about how prescriptive multiculturalism has been applied in different countries. I've seen this ignorance myself by those grouping multiculturalism in with other trendy demonised buzzwords such as SJWs, cultural Marxism or safe spaces. Multiculturalism, Wikipedia. Multiculturalism describes the existence, acceptance or promotion of multiple cultural traditions within a single jurisdiction, usually considered in terms of the culture associated with an ethnic group. The Oxford English Dictionary Definition Multiculturalism The presence of, or support for, the presence of several distinct cultural or ethnic groups within a society. Our commitment to the values of multiculturalism, the schools promote multiculturalism and inclusiveness. To my mind, these two descriptive definitions of multiculturalism are both satisfactory. Now, let's see what is the top voted entry in the Urban Dictionary. Multiculturalism is a Marxist ideology designed to ethnically cleanse European-derived peoples by promoting the massive third world invasion of Europe, United States, Canada and Australia. Multiculturalism leads to racial tension and may erupt into a racial conflict once the racial spoil system breaks down. For example, multiculturalism is in full swing in California. Blacks and Hispanics are engaged in a violent racial struggle in Los Angeles. During my research, I also found a video entitled Multiculturalism Will Fail on the first page of a YouTube search whose content almost shocked me as much as its production values. Worth watching if you like high-end propaganda that starts beautifully and ends with rousing Adolf Hitler speeches. Link in the description bar. The popularity of far-right ideologues aside, the definition of multiculturalism as government policy or as a prescriptive approach is less easy to define than the descriptive two I gave earlier. It depends on the interpretation of the government in question. However, as outlined in Luis Rodriguez's paper named Multiculturalism on the Internet Encyclopedia Philosophy, we can say that a. Multiculturalism aims to address the different demands of cultural groups. b. Multicultural policies aim to provide groups the means by which individuals can pursue their cultural differences. Contrastingly, multiculturalism acknowledges that people have different ways of life and in general terms the state ought not to assimilate these groups but to give them the tools for pursuing their own ways of life or culture. I suspect that in the current climate this sentence might be more controversial than in ordinary times. But the idea that the state should generally leave people to their own devices seems a very liberal or individualist approach. However, today we are seeing more liberals advocating an illiberal approach on this subject. The best way to look at the experience of prescriptive multiculturalism is to examine the nuance through viewing the types of multiculturalism practiced by different countries. The United States, setting aside the murder and ethnic cleansing of the Native American population and forced migration of black people through slavery, is possibly the greatest example of successful mass migration in the history of nations. New immigrants may have kept their customs and passed some on to their children or even lived in the areas populated by their former European countrymen. But vast geographical distance from Europe and the desire for a new life in a country that promised an equal chance for everybody meant that most were happy to join the American melting pot and to call themselves Americans automatically. Such was the desire to fit in, many even anglicised or Americanized their surnames to disguise their origins or to make their names easier to pronounce. In a paper called American Identity, Citizenship and Multiculturalism, Diana Owen illustrates this. 
if they would but suffer to be melted in the pot, then they would become just as American as anyone else. This American model of assimilation was reinforced by core values and ideals established by the country's original Anglo-Protestant settlers that are embedded in the American creed, which promotes the principles of liberty, equality, individualism, populism and laissez-faire that underpin the US Constitution. This model also embraced, as Wattenberg notes, the notion of American exceptionalism. I think it's important not to underestimate those cultural ideals which linger in the national character, considering how many in the US view multiculturalism. Although the original American model isn't usually referred to as multiculturalist, it's more commonly called a melting pot, the US is a multicultural society using the descriptive definition. The type of multiculturalism practiced is an assimilationist model where settlers choose or are persuaded to assimilate into the new society. Modern multiculturalism comes in three forms. Assimilationist France has similarities to the American model. Multicultural Britain, which adopts a classic multiculturalist approach. And Germany, which adopts a hands-off approach. In France, there is an insistence upon a degree of secularism and assimilation in society. Muslim women and girls are not allowed the right to wear the hijab or headscarf in public places, such as schools, regardless whether this undermines the principles of individual freedom. It is a fact that the French have attempted to assert the notion of a common identity. So when the London bombings took place in 2005 and the perpetrators were discovered to be British-born, many French intellectuals pointed to the failings of the British multiculturalist model believing their assimilationist model of integrating minorities was superior. Following Charlie Hebdo and the recent Paris attacks, many of whose attackers were born in France, this argument has been abandoned. A very interesting subtopic in my opinion, but too specialised for the purposes of this video. The British experience of multiculturalism is cut into two parts. David Goodhart, editor of Prospect magazine, distinguishes between the live and let live multiculturalism of the 1950s, which assumed that if people could keep significant aspects of their culture, they would choose to integrate in their own way. The 1980s soft multiculturalism of tolerance and equal rights, and the more recent hard multiculturalism of positive promotion of religious and ethnic identities. However, the reason hard multiculturalism was adopted in the 1980s was because of race riots which engulfed London, Birmingham, Manchester and many other cities in the late 1970s and early 80s, mainly due to police brutality, poor social conditions for ethnic minorities in that period. Keenan Malik, The Failure of Multiculturalism, Foreign Affairs Journal. At that point, British authorities recognised that unless minority communities were given a political stake in the system, tensions would continue to threaten urban stability. It was in this context that multicultural policies emerged. The state, at both national and local level, pioneered a new strategy of drawing black and Asian communities into the mainstream political process by designating specific organisations or community leaders to represent their interests. At its heart, the approach redefined the concept of racism and equality. Racism now meant not simply the denial of equal rights, but also the denial of the right to be different. And equality no longer entailed possessing rights that transcended race, ethnicity, culture and faith, it meant asserting different rights because of them. Although those on the left, and particularly the right, might condemn hard multiculturalism, it's clear that this was a consequence of the discrimination that many ethnic minorities continue to face. This viewpoint was backed up by the Scarman Report commissioned by the British government to investigate and provide recommendations for policy change. Germany has the most extreme model of multiculturalism. In fact, some academics such as Martina Wasmer have described Germany as a multicultural society without multiculturalism. Many foreign-born citizens of Germany arrived in large numbers due to huge demand for foreign workers following the Second World War. Many came from Turkey and lived in their own communities within Germany rather than as part of German society. 
These guest workers were considered temporary residents and were discouraged from integrating by the authorities who wouldn't grant them German citizenship. With this in mind, it's become a lot clearer to me why when speaking with German people, the term multiculti is often laced with a sarcastic tone of irritation, even by those on the left of the political spectrum. So when Germans talk about the failure of multiculturalism, they're right. The German government and its citizens never saw guest workers as anything more than visitors who would return to their mother country. So, which model provides the least problems? The jury is still out, although everybody agrees that there are serious problems. It was thought that the French or American assimilatory models might be preferable, but the French have their doubts. Similarly, it appears that many Americans, or at any rate most Republicans and a certain constituency of vocal liberals online, don't feel their model of multiculturalism is working either. But a Rasmussen poll told a different story. At the end of September last year, 44% of Americans believed multiculturalism good for America, and 26% believed that it was bad for the country. My opinion is that a cross between the British and American models is probably the best option. I'm not convinced that trying to encourage people to surrender their cultural differences is sensible or useful. Just as you don't replace Islam with Christianity, you don't try to convert a patriot of one country into a moronic patriot of another. It might be easier to reprogram the brainwashed, but it is not productive. The trick surely isn't to substitute one slavish love of nation with another, or to use Borg-style tactics of forcing people to assimilate. It's to try to get people to think and hopefully act as individuals. At the same time, if we are serious about integrating new arrivals into society, they must be made to feel welcome, or these people can hardly be blamed for sticking to their own communities and being wedded to what we might consider unacceptable traditions. This is just an idea I'd like to throw out there, but I'm guessing that people identify more with the town or place they live in than the country they live in these days. Wouldn't it be an idea to foster a greater sense of localism? Some anecdotal evidence suggests that immigrants feel a greater sense of pride in the town they live in than the country they live in. And my sense is that this trend is true for many people. Chest-thumping nationalism is in retreat, certainly in the minds of the sane. And faceless transnationalism is a truer enemy of working people than brown-faced terrorists in their midst. Although I've approached this question with an open and yet cynical mind, I can't help wondering if those that claim to be on the centre or left side of the political spectrum are attacking multiculturalism through misunderstanding or through a belief in the superiority of their own culture. It may be a combination of both. I found Diana Owen's paper about the origins of early forms of multiculturalism in America very informative. I found the insistence of assimilation in online discussions with Americans of a liberal persuasion or of going along with the traditional majority cultural model almost obsessive on this point. How is it that a discussion about multiculturalism triggers talk about cultural Marxism, college campuses and separatism when those topics are only loosely related to multiculturalism. It's like they can't see that multiculturalism isn't a synonym for free speech debate or political correctness, and all the other related buzzwords they get so angry about. In many ways, multiculturalism and separatism are opposites. At worst, multiculturalism gives minority communities complete choice whether to integrate or not, but the assimilationist American model discourages this. How do liberals propose to force people to integrate, and how desirable is it to control people? How do liberals propose to force people to ban safe spaces? Can this illiberal desire to control what individuals are allowed to do really constitute liberalism, or is it closer to conservatism, of wanting to preserve a more traditional form of Americanism? Recently, I stumbled into a discussion, re sketchy white dude's breakfast club video on internet friends or foes, where he wrote a rendition of a prayer in the comments section, throwing in multiculturalism with a number of other trigger type buzzwords like misogyny, patriarchy, microaggressions, and vaginal yeast bread. Quote, For thine is the sisterhood, the multiculturalism, and the safe space, forever and ever. Amen. 
Aside from the microaggression of signing off with our men rather than our women, I find it curious that multiculturalism has found itself into his lexicon of demonising words. When I asked for clarification, the buzzwords continued. Had he said something problematic? He asked. It may have been somewhat terse exchange, but I wasn't quite prepared to be accused of dogpiling. Nor did I expect the low blow of being misrepresented and called out on Twitter while Sketchy was in a safe space, ensconced in the bosom of a Twitter circle jerk with one of those interchangeable atheist celebrity YouTubers. For Sketchy, multiculturalism represented segregation and was related to safe spaces, and he wouldn't say whether he supported multiculturalism or not. So I'd invite Sketchy or anyone else watching this video to do a response. Tell me how you feel about multiculturalism and if you support it. Dispute the definitions and if you insist on talking about safe spaces, tell me how you would abolish the right of people to organise themselves. I'm genuinely interested in others' opinions on this topic, whether it's to tear apart this video or just to state what multiculturalism means to you. I will include each reply vid in the description bar to this video. Multiculturalism is not a simple topic and is connected to many important issues we face as a society. But conflating it with issues that are related but are not the same does not bring the discussion forward in my opinion. I think it's important that those who have a passionate and genuine belief in equality should not throw the idea of people of all backgrounds, colours and creeds living peacefully side by side under the bus. For me, multiculturalism and diversity is a wonderful thing. I love being in cities where you see all kinds of beautiful people from all four corners of the globe. I love speaking to people who have different cultural experiences to my own. I love discovering that two people whose relatives were sworn national enemies are best friends. I love seeing white people take part alongside minorities in anti-racist protests. It makes me proud, proud of the human spirit. I love Chinatown in London. I love going to Portuguese restaurants in Ladbrook Grove, eating Jamaican patties in Halston, samosas in Wembley. I love some chips with mushy peas in Leeds. I love going for a Balti in Birmingham or an early morning fry up in Bristol. For me, multiculturalism is richness. I don't want to live in a place where everyone looks like me, thinks as I do and has similar experiences to me. Not everybody feels the same way, but I have a passionate belief in diversity and equality. If you attack those values, you may consider me as an enemy. There is nothing you can do to persuade me that an individual from a foreign culture or minority group isn't as worthy of living alongside me as anyone else. An attack on that individual is an attack on me and I will not tolerate it.